Hello and welcome friends, Glorious Badger here, and today we are returning to painting the Necron Overlord. So, Vallejo model colour black green, I use this a fair amount, and especially when painting sort of glowy green things, it's a good colour to start with in my opinion, nice base colour, bit, probably a bit dark, but uh, it, gets, it gets us on the way to where we want to be. So we're just going to paint this these power cables there's one on this one and i believe there's one on the other arm to so his uh i don't know what weapon he's got on his right hand but there is a power cable leading to that as well as always the paint is thinned down a fair amount it's always best to put on more coats than one massive heavy coat so we're just working that on getting some decent base coverage before we move on to the next step. So we've got this cable, the cable on the other hand, or the other arm. We have got uh, the staff which I'm deciding to paint green. There is that cable right there. Okay, so it doesn't, it's not attached to that coil. It's a separate, separate cable indeed. Um, so we've got this cable, that cable, which is already done. We've got this, the base of the staff, like the sort of ribbed bit of the staff. We're going to paint green. And I'm sure there's another bit. Maybe the, there's a cable at the top of the staff near that power unit. Up there, you can see it just at the top of the camera screen right there. And I think that might... No, he's got some cabling around his front as well, like around his midriff. I believe that is about it for the green. See right there, I've, I've already painted uh, one of them silver or steel. So that is going to get painted uh, with this green color. Just eyeing it up, just making sure I'm getting all the pieces that I need to be getting and also waiting for the, that layer of paint to dry. Obviously waiting for the previous layer is a good move. Okay, we're going to get the cables on the stomach now. I think there are two cables and a coiled bit. The coiled bit, I think I'm going to leave steel, um, but we're just going to get the cables right there. Just add a bit of a bit of interest, rather than just paint it steel or some other metal color. Getting the inside, waiting for each layer to dry, and then going back and giving it another coat as required. Same with all of the other cables. Ah, we're going to break out Warpstone Glow. Big thumbs up. Yeah, this, co this color has, in my opinion, it's got terrible coverage. We've also painted the staff, as you can see right there. We're going to shake Warpstone Glow. So we are going to apply this paint where we want the majority of the color to be, and we want this sort of glow to appear from. So in this particular case, towards the center of the cables. This is going to require several layers of paint. So while you're waiting for these layers of paint to dry, you could go over to twitch.tv forward slash glorious badger and make sure you're following me. I do stream three days a week currently. And I would love to see you over there. Failing that, you could also make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. Okay, so we are going to get the top parts of this of the each cylindrical part of this staff i believe is it the top parts i genuinely can't remember i do appear to be leaving i think i'm going for the sort of uh, top parts or indeed the center of each section rather than just the entire thing I guess a bit of time will tell. Now we're going to go and get these cables. The majority of them will be green, so we're going to try and get a decent coverage on the entire thing. Just moving along progressively, waiting for each bit to dry before carrying on. 
getting that cable done there. Yeah, the coverage of Warpstone Glow in my uh, experience has been rather terrible. It's needed multiple coats to get things looking even. We do get there in the end. And once that coverage is good, it is a, it is a lovely color. But it is a bit of a nightmare to work with. So just take your time. Drink several cups of delicious tea. Going back over there to get more coats on that stuff, as you can see right now. Yep, delicious tea or delicious water, whatever it is you find delicious. Put on a film, listen to a podcast, check out Glorious Badger's Twitch stream, and just uh, enjoy the process. Going back in there with the second coat on the cable, as you can see. I am forgetting, I think at this point, no, we do, I will go back later and get the power cable at the top of the staff right there. Just trying to get the cable to the other parts done. There we go. Look at that memory of mine. I can almost remember exactly how I painted a miniature. So I have used this color recently to paint a salamander commission. I will be turning that into a video as well, hopefully. That also took many, many coats. But we got there in the end. Ah, moot green. Many people love this color. Obviously, it is not as good as bilious green, but we have to make do. So we are going to use moot green to paint some of these cables, add a lot more um, saturation, glowiness, whatever other word you would prefer to like use. Glowiness is a good one, though. And I'm sure it's a very technical term. But we're going to go for roughly, I believe, the sort of center of these cables. Um, I don't have any particular reason what, why. I was just thinking, yep, we want a sort of glowy bit in the middle of the cable. So that is why I was painting it. It's not, it's not to represent uh, light falling on it from any anywhere in particular. It's supposed to be a sort of a bit of a bit of an internal glow at a specific along a bit of the cable. It's not uh it's not any particular effect I was going for. I just like the look of it. That's just to keep things really simple, I just like the look of it. So uh that's what I did. Occasionally I do do that. I do like to try and um have things emulate light bounce or uh, reflections or whatnot, but sometimes I just go for go for the looks, um, and that's what we're doing on this one. Going for the center of those cables as well, building that color saturation up. Thinking about it and looking at that stuff, I think next time, or if I was to paint this particular thing again, I like the idea of potentially having the brightest part of the entire uh, green cylindrical section up near the up near his hand now we've got scale 75 uh toxic waste green and model color uh yellow green right here to use we are going to brighten things up a little bit move it a bit towards yellow so this is the toxic waste green we're going to go in and do the very center sort of section of the green bits of cable. So right there on the along the sort of stomach torso area. And we're going to get the power cable right in the center there. Obviously the other power cables and the center of the staff. But we've got to make sure each and each layer is dry before we move on. Getting those power cables right there. This section doesn't take nearly as long as the other sections because there's, surprisingly enough, a lot less surface area to cover in paint. So we should be through with these sort of stages relatively quickly. Obviously, you can spend much more time glazing colors in and stuff like that. Um, but because I'm going into oil wash later on, blending colors in right now, I think, would be a waste of time because the majority of the blends can and sometimes are 
covered by the oil wash. So it is, I think it's certainly a good method if you want to get through a bunch of miniatures relatively quickly. Um, in my mind, my Necrons, the Warriors are pretty filthy. The further you move up the food chain, uh, the cleaner and tidier the Necrons will be. Uh, this Overlord is relatively high up the chain. Uh, I have a few more characters to paint, and the very top one I'm I'm going to try and do as clean as possible without using much oil wash or sort of weathering techniques at all. Now starting on the center of these staff cylinder things. I'm looking at this now and think it's reminding me of a ice cream in the UK. It's sort of summertime. I'm starting to think that ice cream might be allowed. and um, it's, I think it was called a, is it a Twizzler, sort of green and yellow thing I remember from my childhood. It is starting to remind me of one of those. So yeah, um, just checking it out to make sure we've got everything that needs to be gotten. I think those cables are looking good. We've got the stomach ones. We've got the... Ah, uh, we didn't get the, the sort of that part. Yeah, we keep missing that bit, so we need to make sure we've got a decent bit of coverage there. That sphere on his right hand, on the back of his right hand of that sort of gauntlet thing, I've still not got a colour on that yet. All right, Vallejo model colour, yellow-green. This is going to be the last part of this uh, green section. We're going to be painting on an even narrower band of colour within these, um, on these cables and things. As such, this section should be relatively quick. We're gonna have to do probably a couple of decent coats, so um, it'll be quite watered down, waiting for each layer to dry. Nothing worse than having a layer of paint down, and then you think it's dry, you go and put some paint down, and it peels up the previous layer, leaving a bit of textured stuff that you've, you've got to deal with. So it's better safe than sorry. Give it a little bit of extra time just to make sure. If you check out my Instagram, instagram.com forward slash glorious badge, you'll see roughly how long ago this miniature was painted. I've had this footage on my computer for quite a while. I've been waiting for various things to fall into place before I start editing it. But here we go. He is looking pretty snazzy. Right here. I'm liking it. I'm liking that uh, purple, the magenta. I think the green does work. Now, I do see a bit of white-ish paint. Celestra Grey in this case. And I also see Ulthan Grey. Ah, and Morrow White. These are the colours I use to paint white. Now, we are going to quickly start off by doing the sort of orb things it's got on his shoulder pads. I don't know what they are, shoulder pad things. Um, I'm going to start off with Celestra Grey. I'm going to thin it down a little bit, obviously. I'm going to reach for the model. I'm going to pick the model up. Then I'm going to start putting paintbrush to plastic. Okay, so starting with Celestra Grey is a good color to start off with when painting white. Um, and we're just going to fill in these little circle things, spherical objects, with this base color. I'm going to do the white at the end of the filming. This is going to be just like the setting up the final bit. Um, because we've got the oil wash to do before we get to that stage. So I don't want to basically waste time having to redo stuff too much. Okay. So, as you can see, I'm putting some color down on the base. I believe this color is a Zandri dust. We are going to go for a desert base. Funnily enough, I believe we're going to be doing a desert base for my Blood Angels as well. So, we're just going to get a decent base coat, literally, on this miniature. Um, we are going to be going over it with a sand texture. 
and that has already got paint mixed into it. This is quite a thick coat. I believe this is, in fact, desert yellow currently. It does look a bit brighter than the um, other paint. Zandri dust. I had to look at my table where I've got it lying. And we've now moved up to uh, desert yellow from Vallejo, Vallejo model color range. So that is definitely paler. Making sure we've got a nice even coat as required. Especially on the outer sort of circle of the uh, base, the outer part. I like to make sure we've got a especially thick coat there. Um, because I know we're going to be putting the texture on over the center anyway. Uh, I just want to make sure that the outside has got a decent coverage there. So we are spending a little bit of time. There is a bit of steel in there. I'm not too concerned. I can always go back. A bit of rebar, in fact. I can always go back and tart it up with a little bit of steel. And I'm probably going to go over that with a tiny bit of rust, if I remember. That is the big part of that question, if I remember. All right. So you can see those little chips of armor already happening there. Oh, dark sand. This is the final color of the three sort of sandy colors I was using. I was using Zandri Dust, Vallejo Model Color, Desert Yellow, and this would be Dark Sand, which I'm just doing on a little uh, smaller, smaller areas of that rock. As you can see, I'm not completely covering it right now. We just want to sort of have a bit of color modulation, a bit of change in tone, that sort of stuff, just on that rock. I'm just going to, I think I just got some of that on the, yeah, I'm just tidying it up because as you can see, it's watered down. Remember to water your paints down, folks. So I'm just sort of uh, tidying up any little bit of um, paint which is drawn along the little parts of his feet. There we go. I think that's, yeah, that's good. I mean, it's going to be covered in oil washes soon enough. It's not going to be a huge deal. That is the dark sand, which is lighter than the, than the desert yellow. Which is, uh, it confused me when I was looking at them, because I was expecting them it to be the other way around, but evidently uh, I was very mistaken. This is quite sort of uh, creamy yellow. As you can see, it is quite close to the base texture we're going to be put down, putting down well as well. There you go. As you can see, I'm making sure the outside is getting a, ver a very decent coat. Look at that. Amazing. I'm not going to worry too much, though, because the texture stuff is pretty thick and we're not going to have major issues. Here it is. Just putting on that second coat now. Did a bit of fast footage, forwarded footage in the camera. I think I just stopped recording at that point while it was uh, still drying. We are working that paint in towards the center. Having a whale of a time. Folks, do comment below. Tell me what you would like to see painted in the future. Uh, I would love some input. I have a variety of things I'm going to be painting anyway, but if people have particular things they would like to see at some point, I would love to hear about it. I'm not saying it's necessarily going to happen. Um, but it, uh, it's always good to have new ideas, right? Okay. Looking absolutely fabulous. So next video will be the oil washes and the basing, hopefully, if I've recorded that part. Folks, I would like to say thank you so much again for hanging out with me today. I will be back next Wednesday with another painting video of some sort, either the last part of this video or 
something else entirely. Oh, big thumbs up. Well done, Badger. Cracking work. Thank you, and goodbye.